Hello everyone. My name is Francis Kigen Chepkui, KCA US Technical Officer, popularly known as Drone. Today I'm here to answer your question on Ask Your Aviator. And I'll be answering your question you have asked through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This is our first episode on Ask Your Aviator series. Like my first question was asked by Lord Mutai. The question is, is there a possibility of allowing civilian innovators, inventors and entrepreneurs on drone technology to invest and operate on Kenyan airspace as part of ways to mitigate on current transport, communication and surveillance challenges in Kenya? I will answer that yes, the authority is here to support anyone who is ready to invent, assemble, manufacture, or modify drones. This is addressed in our Regulation 8, and I read, Any person intending to manufacture, assemble, modify, test, sell, or otherwise deal in unmanned aircraft system or component, therefore shall apply for authorization from the KCA authority. What the authority just needs to know is whoever is doing this, are they doing it for good? Responsibility of the authority is to come inspect where the assembly, manufacture or modification is going to be done and approve it based on the application of the applicant. The authority will also need to know where the testing of the manufactured drones are going to be done. And this must be done in an area where there is no population and these need to be also approved by the authority. Because this is the first time this model or drone is going to be tested it needs some kinds of assurance from the authority that where it is going to be tested, it will be free from harm of anyone. To answer this question, I will say yes. The authority has been approving the use of drones for emergency activities even before the approval of the regulations. For example, Organizations like Red Cross have been approved to use drones for humanitarian activities like uh, mapping out flood areas, areas affected by desert locusts, safety measures that is currently being addressed on COVID-19 pandemic. So yes, the authority has been very supportive in loosening this this procedures when needs arises, especially on emergency issues. For Kanyawira question, currently KCA is finalizing the charges for U.S. in Kenya. When the regulations were approved, we did not have uh, charges in place, so we have to draft and subject it to public participation as is stipulated in our constitution. So currently we are almost finalizing for the CS to approve the charges but uh, we have considered all the stakeholders comments and we have amended where possible and I feel these charges will be affordable to whoever wants to operate a U.S. in Kenya. Okay, for Mburu Ndungu question, this question will be answered once our charges are approved by the CS. But what I can assure you is that it is affordable. For the import fees vary depending on the cost of the drone. The import registration fee 
will be the same for all drones. We are not considering the kind of operation that drone is going to do. It will not vary with the type of drone. For the Lule question, KCA has uh, proposed charges which is currently awaiting approval and this will be addressed once it is approved. Yes, this is still the case. The regulations allow the authorities six months to register all the drones which are already in the country. Those drones which are already in the country will not attract import charges, but they'll be charged for registration. Yes, anybody in Kenya is eligible to import a drone. If you look at uh, Regulation 6, talks about eligibility to own a UAS. A person shall be eligible to own a manned aircraft system if that person is a Kenyan citizen or a resident in Kenya of a minimum age of 18 years, a body corporate, national government or county government. For Lule questions concerning the prerequisite for the issuance of ratings, this is addressed in Schedule 2. Once an individual has qualified to have an RPL, which is a remote pilot license, the license can be endorsed with three types of ratings. That is beyond visual line of sight, BV loss rating, extended visual line of sight, which is EV loss, and instructor's rating. The second question for Lule is, what are the circumstances for revoking a drone license? This is addressed in Regulation 22. It says, notwithstanding the provision of Regulation, which is 13, the authority may cancel, suspend, or vary any authorization or approval granted under this regulation. A. In the interest of public safety or national security. B. For violation of this regulation. C. For violating any requirement, restriction, term, or condition imposed by the authority. Or D. For any public interest. Yes, KCA registers a drone, but the same drone can be used for various activities. This is like videography, filming, surveillance. So the operator can use the same drone for different applications or for different operations. Yes, all drones that is going to be imported into the country must be registered. And before registration, anybody who intends to bring in a drone must get an approval before importing the drone. That is well stipulated in the regulation. Yes, during the application of use of drones, each operator or each individual will be required to state the purpose of the drone. That is when the authority will assess each operation and give approval based on the application of the operator or an individual. Yes, KCA will ensure that all the drones that are going to be imported are from reputable companies or manufacturers like the DJI or any other company that is already in the market and it has been approved. If the drone by any chance will require a type certificate 
then that site that that type certificate must be produced before the drone is registered in our current regulation there is no definition for a toy kca regards all drones and all drones must be registered whether for recreational or for commercial use every question is addressed in our regulation 24 it reads a person shall not operate an manned aircraft system at above 400 feet above ground level and within 50 meters of any person vessel vehicle or structure which is not under the control of the person in charge of the manned aircraft system however this is subject to changes based on the operation of each individual this will be on case by case basis when an individual wants to go above the 400 feet then certain requirements must be met before the approval yes kca will endeavor to sensitize the population about the need to understand the risk of flying in danger prohibited or restricted areas without approvals the effects of drones flying into aviation if i understand the, this question is maybe the person is asking will the drone have effect once they fly in with conventional aircraft i will say yes what is going to happen is that us operation at any time should not interfere with the operation of conventional aircraft so the introduction of us operation should take care of already the congested airspace that's why we emphasize that each drone operator must undergo training to be able to understand the regulation governing the airspace thank you for your questions continue engaging us on the ask your aviator series and continue following us on twitter facebook and instagram